Hey, it's Marcus Giuliano, HealthyChefDude.com. I'm a chef on a mission. I'm a mission to. I'm on a mission for restaurants to be bring better food to us because we deserve better food. I haven't been uh, on on my uh, on my blog lately doing any videos. So I've been extremely busy. Uh, when the summertime rolls around here, I uh, work on another small project, and it's not quite small. Uh, I run a kitchen at a local horseback riding camp. It's called the International um, International uh, Horseback Riding Camp. And it's uh, in Greenfield Park, New York. And I was brought on six years ago to make sure that the kids are eating healthy, organic food for camp. It's a sleepaway camp. Girls from all over the world come to this camp. And uh, my daughter goes there for two weeks. And um, I uh, became very, very, very friendly with the owner. And I have a great time there. So for me, it's really not like work. But I just have to be there to make sure that the kids are eating, eating properly, eating healthy. And eating as much organic as possible. So I've been involved in that in the last two weeks. It's uh, the 22nd of June right now. Father's Day just happened the other day. Um, other big news here, I'm recording my very first video on my 27 and a half inch iMac that's right in front of me here. And I, I'm so excited. Um, I bought this because we're just, we don't have enough computers here at the restaurant. And uh, so uh, this, was a, uh, this was a really good, good asset to have in our office. The staff can use it. Um, which means I can still walk around with my, my MacBook and my wife can walk around with her MacBook and nobody doing service. They just come right here to the desk and work away with them. They have to do the staff. Um, so everybody's like, wow, I like your new computer. But in actuality, you know, the staff is using it more than I am. But I, you know, I really bought it because I wanted to do better videos or more videos because let's face it, this, this is an awesome computer, this, uh, this MacBook. But uh, I do all my videos off of here. I upload all the HD videos and I... I have a two the two terabyte external hard drive because just this thing's overloaded to the max. So this is the uh, the, the computer that I'm going to use hopefully for all my all my videos, and I'm kind of liking this new eyesight uh, thing in here, and then the, the quality that that that's coming out of it. So uh, another news, uh, not this Sunday, the Sunday before, my son and I ran the Orange Classic, the 30th Orange Classic race, which is a 10k race in Middletown, New York. It's been happening for 30 years. Um, George Shorter was the one who, uh, who kind of made this race famous. He was the, uh, the Olympian, the Olympian runner who, uh, who did very well. I forgot what Olympics back in the seventies. Um, I believe he was a gold medalist. He comes every year for this race. He's from the, he's from Middletown, New York. So he really endorses this. Um, they have a lot of super elite, uh, af athletes that come to, to race this. My son, who's eight. And if any of you know, Justin and I, or know, know, you know, the restaurant here, Justin is a really big runner. Justin loves running. He's just turned eight years old. He ran his first half marathon in, fir in kindergarten. At the age of six, he ran his first half marathon. And, of course, Justin eats like I talk and I preach. Uh, you know, he's, he's obviously uh, my son, so uh, he knows all this, all this stuff. And he knows all the healthy foods and really has uh, become acclimated to them. So you can, kids will eat healthy. Uh, so Justin and I ran the race. He legitimately beat me. Um, Yes, um, you know, sometimes we've, we've always made a pact to, like, finish together, like, hand-in-hand hand and cross the finish line so one of us will wait for each other. But I got to tell you, the kid was on top of his game. I bought him new running shoes the week before and really feeling good about himself. He gets out there. He finishes the race in 5104, 10K, six and a quarter miles. 5104, the kid did it in. I don't know what average. That's eight-something. or I don't know what, what I, I got to do my math here and figure out what that is on a mile average. His first mile was 7.43. The last half mile, the kid just took off. Um, he didn't say anything to me like, Dad, let's go burn it. Because he'll usually say, hey, Dad, I got some juice left or something. N not this time. He heard the band. He saw the track that you have to finish on. And he just took off. And I, I before I knew it, I couldn't catch him. And I, I tried. I just, just couldn't do it. So congratulations to my son, Justin, 5104. Uh, some current news right now. Genetically modified salmon. Um, let me pull it up on the window here. This is a great thing. Now I can actually see what's going on uh, on the internet here, look into the camera, and really uh, be able to reference some things, hopefully. So genetically modified organisms, GMOs, this is where they take crops and um, meat now too, or, or, or milk because they take it for the cows with this bovine growth hormone. But big companies like Monsanto are taking and splicing the genes. This has been around for over 10 years, so a lot of you probably know this. But if you don't know this, this may come as a shock. They're splicing genes of plants to put different characteristics. For instance, cold weather tomatoes are getting soul genes in them because fish, the fish, the soul, you know, withstands colder, uh, uh, colder water, just like that. So they're experimenting where they're crossing barriers. Not only were they doing plant 
uh, from certain plant characteristics to other plants because that's that's really been done for years upon years. That's called hybriding. That's when two apple trees are sitting next to each other. Apples aren't a good example because each seed is different inside each apple. But this is where two two plants are sitting next to each other and they cross pollinate by nature by the bees and the pollen and up comes something else. You know, it's a little modified characteristics from other hybriding's been done for for many many years, centuries and. We've actually, you know, humans, human people have actually induced hybriding to make crops, you know, grow a little bigger or whatever. It makes it be shipped a little further. But now they're splicing the genes of plants. So this is different. GMO is much different than hybridization. Um, hybridization is not good to begin with. You really want the, the wild, natural strain of the plant. Like bananas are nothing what we know of the original banana to be. Same thing with other things like dates. Um, there's just nothing what the original uh, ancestor of the plant actually looked like to begin with. Um, so... There are some implications if you do eat a lot of hybrid. You know, they, they, they say there are. Eating too much hybrid fruit is not natural, and you want to stick with fruits that aren't hybridized as much, which makes total sense. If you want to eat eat natural and organic and, and as close to nature as possible, why would you be eating things that have been altered by man? Well, now they've taken it, you know, 10 steps further with the way they take the genes and they splice the genes together, and one characteristic of a plant or an animal can go into another characteristic of a plant or animal. Um, so I've kind of crossed the species barrier, but even they don't cross the species barrier. For instance, like corn, they will load corn up with BT, which is a chemical that they use to douse the fields to kill any of the insects or anything. Instead of spraying the fields now, they just splice it into the genes of the corn, so the corn is toxic all the time, not just when you're spraying, you know, the field with BT or whatever the chemical you're using. So when monarch butterflies land, bees, this has been an issue for over a decade. It's the mid-90s this has been going on. Um, they're really concerned about the environment of, of, of the good insects out there. And of course, the good insects take care of the bad insects, and it all goes around. That's why biodynamic farming is so important, where they analyze everything, the good and the bad, and everything coexists. So now GMO corn, or these GMO crops, or these farms can say, or these big companies that are promoting it, and, and starting with this, can say, well, we don't use fertilizer or chemicals anymore or pesticides to spray it on our fields. Well, no, they don't use them to spray down the fields. They use them to inject into the cells of the plant, into the genes, so it's always ex being expressed onto the plant. So that's a serious, serious issue. They also do something called Roundup Ready, where they take um, Roundup, the opposite enzyme, stick it into, or the Roundup enzyme, and stick it into the plant, splice it into the genes, really hard, splice it in. So now when they grow potatoes, um, Corn, things like that. Now some, now, some crops have actually fallen off because big people like big companies like McDonald's are saying, I don't want any part of Roundup Ready potatoes or whatever it is, term, whatever it is. And so the industry just dies out for that particular crop, which is great. But they've done this where they, they, they inject the Roundup in it, the opposite enzyme or the enzyme, I'm not sure what exactly it is, but they can douse the whole field with now with Monsanto's Roundup. Everything dies in the field except for the corn or the potatoes, whatever crop is called Roundup Ready. G uh, soybeans are done like this. So if you think about it, the Roundup is on the plants. And it's them being careful now instead of spraying in between and getting to the soil, maybe infiltrating the roots. Now the whole field is just dusted with Roundup. Now I know all of us are smart enough not to go into the local hardware store, buy some Roundup and spray it on our garden and then start to eat the things we just sprayed Roundup on. We're not that stupid. But... This is the part that gets me agitated. This is why I'm on a mission, because we're eating this stuff anyway from these big companies. These big companies are giving it to us, and they're not labeling it, they're not telling us, and they think that we're idiots. Other countries won't have our produce come in because of this genetically modified stuff that we're doing. Um, you know, and I'm talking about this on, on I'm gonna put this, put this on, I'm going to put this video on YouTube and Viddler. And I've heard that if I talk about Monsanto and GMO and how bad it is and things like that, that YouTube is going to yank the video. I've seen this happen before. I've heard about this happening before. So I'm going to test the waters. I like what Viddler does, and I'm going to put it on YouTube because I have a YouTube channel too. And I'm going to see if I'm going to see because I'm openly saying that GMO, we should not be doing GMOs. I don't support GMOs. I will not serve GMO, GMOs. Of course, they're everywhere. So it infiltrates into the food system left and right without us knowing. But they need to be labeled. They need We need to have a choice on genetically modified stuff. Back to the salmon. They're doing this with salmon now. They're, they're modifying it. The salmon's growing three times as fast. Who knows what the severe implications are? Because there's no long-term studies that, that are going after this. Bottom line is you don't have to worry about salmon right now. They're saying by 2012 um, it's going to make it in because they're trying to get the eggs approved for the spawning season of this year to get in. So it's a year old, the salmon, and they'll be. But they're growing three times faster. Their muscles are swelling. 
Who really knows what the implications are? Are these fish going to be full of cancer? Are they going to cause problems when we eat them as far as, you know, our kidneys or other problems with, with our systems, hormones? Who knows? We need adequate studies. Um, so really be aware of what you're eating. If you see petitions out there, if you see people wanting to label GMO stuff, by all means, let's get GMO stuff labeled. Let's give ourselves a choice. I'm Marcus Giuliano. I'm Chef on a Mission. I will keep you updated. HealthyChefDude.com. Talk to everybody later, and hopefully you'll see many more videos coming out of my, uh, my iMac here. So uh, talk to you guys later.